Welcome to St. Anne's. I'm so glad you could join us this morning. What follows is our worship service on this beautiful but cold day. I'm glad you could be here. If you get a chance, please download the bulletin and say the prayers with us. Because when we say the prayers, we are praying to our God and to also to our soul. Know that you are very welcome. Let us worship God. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together may we say, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the, in the highest, highest, and, and peace, peace to, to his, his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and Father, we, we worship you, you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for, for you, you alone, alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen the lord be with you and also with you let us pray Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 62, verses 6 to 14 in unison. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. 
my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. And God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings in it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the prophet. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world, the star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus when we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all, the night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, 
and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately they called them, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My first job out of college was in marketing. And we were taught through many different training scenarios that in a marketing spiel to sell something or to sell what you believe in, you need an initial business statement, an IBS it was called. And it started with, if I could show you, would you believe or would you buy or would you whatever? These days, thanks to Jim Collins and other business consultants, we call it the elevator speech. You're given 14 floors to convince someone else in your elevator to either believe in what you believe in, to believe in whatever, to buy your product before the doors open again on the ground floor. But you wonder what, as a Christian, our initial business statement or our elevator speech would be. For those of us who are in profit or nonprofits, we have spent a lot of time trying to craft our mission and vision statements in hopes that with that kind of clarity, we can then present to others, well, for those of us who are Christians, we can present the good news of Jesus Christ. But what does that mean? And it, as a community, say, as St. Anne's, how would we present that to people? This morning's readings are an example of a variety of the miraculous ways that God has created a marketing scheme, if you will. That God is trying to show to us and to those in our history how God is and the call to believe in that creator God. Jonah. You got to love Jonah. Jonah was heard this voice out of nowhere that says from God, go to Nineveh and preach repentance. Now Nineveh was the arch enemy. It was the capital of the Assyrians. No wonder Jonah said, I'm leaving, and got on the next boat that was going to Tarshish. God would not have that. God sent this huge storm that scared the sailors on that boat. They finally figured out it was Jonah who was causing the storm, and at Jonah's request, they threw him overboard. And you know the rest. Jonah was swallowed by a fish, a whale, and taken then in the midst of Jonah's prayer, in the belly of this fish, God heard Jonah's prayer and brought Jonah to the shores of Nineveh and said to Jonah, this is what you will say to the people of Nineveh, which was so big that it was almost 60 miles long, three days, Jonah walked through this capital saying, in the next 40 days, God will destroy Nineveh. And the miraculous thing is, they believed him. From the king to the cows, they all tore their clothes, repented, and said, please, dear God, don't destroy us. Now that is some preaching. In our gospel lesson, not only today, but last week, it is the story of Jesus, the beginning of the discipleship, of calling people to join him 
as he proclaimed the good news. Last week in the Gospel of John, we heard a version of the calling of John, Andrew, Simon, and James. Two sets of brothers. I think I got that right. Um, And all Jesus did along the shore of the Lake of Galilee was just simply saying, come and see. And they dropped their nets and came. In this morning's gospel, again, Jesus is walking along the shores of the Galilee, preaching about the good news that it is time that the kingdom of God will come to this earth. He turns to the brothers, to Andrew and Peter, better known as Simon, and says, follow me. And they do. A little bit longer, he says to the sons of Zebedee, James and John, follow me. And they leapt out of their boat and followed him. Now that is some preaching. These are the words that God has put in many different voices and many different ways, whether it is Jonah or God's only son, Jesus that was so resonant in our souls that we repented, dropped our nets, stopped our work, and followed. We all have heard that voice. Whether you are hoping to hear it in your soul or whether it was whispered to you as a baby or whether it was when you were in the midst of a storm or whether you were felt like you were in the belly of a fish, we have heard that call that says, follow me, come and see. There are some commentaries that say that the four brothers, the Peter and John, Peter and Andrew, James and John, all were yearning in their hearts for something and all they needed to hear was Jesus saying, Follow me. Come and see. Oh, I wish sometimes it would be that simple, that we could hear so clearly God's words. But sometimes it is as quiet as that soft voice or a yearning in our heart, and sometimes it is the clarion bell of God saying to us, Come and see. Follow me. That call can be as instrumental as dedicating the rest of your life, dropping your nets, stopping your job, and just leaving to go and follow Jesus. Or it could be more of you too are called to be the voice of God. Whether it's your smile at the cashier's checkout lady, or the nurse, or the doctor, or whether you sing out from your windows, or whether you buy extra food for those of us for, to bring to the food pantry at St. Anne's, whether it's you tirelessly working in the AV club, who I call the gnomes, or whether it's the music that you sing, or the organ that you play, or the leadership in our vestry. It is when we feel in our soul, it is that call that says, yes, Lord, I will follow you. In a few minutes, St. Anne's will have their annual meeting we will hear the good news of God that is working through so many people of St. Anne's. We will hear the discernment of the new vision and the new mission as we seek our new rector. We will hear what people are doing, whether it's knitting, whether it's crocheting, or whether it's driving for the food pantry. 
whether it's rebuilding things, talking to contractors about how we can repair our building, or looking forward to the investment of our senior housing building. We have heard the call that says, follow me. Come and see, and may it be so. And standing as you are able, let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Mary Ann and Chilton, our bishops, and all bishops. For this gathering, for Jane, our priest, Eugene, our deacon, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for all who have, are afflicted by COVID-19. More than 96.2 million cases worldwide, more than 2 million deaths worldwide. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died, especially Peggy Devan, Steve Miller, Sylvanus Tipson, and Rhonda Peoples. I ask your prayers for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for Maria Amelia Andrade, Kathleen Bear, the Barlow family, Gerald Barlow, Harry and Angela Bendorf, Alicia Better, the Brantover family, Lois and Joe Carinci, Helen Clark, Vilsi Maria DeAndrade, Beth Ann Dixon, 
Lori Erickson, Michael Farber, Leanne Feiss, Oscar Fletcher and the Fletcher family, Diego Floredo, Courtney Fussell, Taryn Goodman, Jane Hart, Jim Lee, Rafaela Martins, Brian McClooney, Lenore Mahara, and the Mahara family, Steve Mullen, Joan Moore, David Neiman, Ivy and Rick Reed, Eric Rogers, Fritz Snyder, Susan, Susan Shumanuki, Terry Smiley, Kendall Stewart, Justin Walker, Jessica Ward, and all the food pantry families we are now serving. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now we pray our series of prayers, especially for those in the beginning here who have to travel. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for our government. O Lord, our governor, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. Lord, keep this nation under your care. To the president, to governors of states, mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Give, Give grace, grace to your, your servants, servants, O Lord. To senators and representatives, and those who make our laws in states, cities, and towns, Give courage and wisdom and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, and that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. For yours, For yours is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom, O Lord, Lord and, and you are exalted, exalted as head, head above all. Amen. Amen. And now, for those who are on the search committee and for all of St. Anne's as we seek our new permanent rector, let us pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you know, know the, the needs, needs of your, your church, church in every place. place. 
look graciously upon us, the peoples of St. Anne's, and grant us the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we seek a new rector for this parish. Give us discernment, wisdom, and confidence in your timing. Guide the members of your search committee as they labor to be faithful in seeking your will. We pray for the life of our parish, that we may continue to be strengthened in our mission to be Jesus Christ's heart, hands, and feet to our neighbors, no matter where they are on their journey of faith. Bless us with mutual trust, respect, courage, and foresight as you shepherd our community through its journey. Grant us continuous direction and inspire us toward general self-reflection. All this we ask as we walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. O oh God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. With me. And now comes our announcements. As I said, please look in your emails for... Why am I using my mask for this? Um, please look in your emails for the link to the annual meeting. There's no need to register. Just click on the link at 11 o'clock. If you have any problems, you'll see some instructions in the email about technical um, issues and who to call for that. We hope we will see you at 11 o'clock. If you get a chance, download the draft of the annual meeting. We also will be printing the final copy on Tuesday. If you want a hard copy of that, we will mail it to you and also have some available. Just send me an email or the office that you want it mailed, um, and we will put it in the mail for you. And finally, Shane. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. This is Shane's last... Um, last action as senior warden. Uh, Rachel, would you come up, please? Come on, Shane, you got to get in the picture. There you go. Rachel, there you are. There. <laughs> I will put my mask on because we're awfully close. I wanted to thank Rachel on behalf of this parish. Rachel has done a huge amount of work in addition to her other work to keep this parish running along with the AV team. So on behalf of the vestry and the church, I'd like to present this to you. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Yes. done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now, thank you all, both of you. And thanks, Shane, also, for four years of incredible work. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, what follows is the Lord's Supper. All are welcome to, to pray with us, even though you cannot be here. Please say the prayers. Please feel God's spirit within you as we say the words here. Um, if you were here in person, I would be saying wherever you are on your spiritual journey, wherever you are going, wherever you have come from, you are welcome here. May someday we gather together again to share God's supper and know then, as we know now, that all are welcome here at St. Anne's. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you, to you forever, forever and, ever. and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, and the planets in their courses. And this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have, have mercy, mercy, Lord, for we are sinners, sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By, By his blood, blood he reconciled us. us. By, By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate, we celebrate his death and resurrection, resurrection as we await the day of his coming. coming. O Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. With the Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And for those who, of you who are worshiping at home, let us pray. Dear Lord, help me to remember past celebrations of your Eucharistic feast. Reanimate in me the feelings and desires that make this experience a sacred and abiding one. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those of you who are worshiping at home, let us pray. God of truth and love, we thank you for this act of spiritual communion, even as we long for the days of gathering in community to partake of your body and blood. Renew in us that which bonds us together our faith and trust in you, so that we may be transformed and grow in faith and love of you. Amen. Let us say together the mission of St. Anne's. As a community of faith, let us go forward to bring others to Christ through worship, witness, and love for one another and our neighbor. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.